GB matchup number two, Matt Black making his way out here. He's going to be taking on Jin Melancholy, both these guys from Camp 8, and uh, both these guys impressive throughout the last few months here in this, uh, at the Nightmare Factory. Absolutely. Look at the physique there and, and, and the walk there of Matt Black. There's a certain kind of confidence and swagger, almost seemingly nonchalant as he walks into the ring. Another Canadian here, as we mentioned earlier, a, few, a handful of Canadians here in uh, Camp 8, here at the Nightmare Factory, of course, at the uh, camp up in Canada with Jacques Rougeau. Absolutely. And uh, QT picking a, f a handful of winners, bringing them down here to the Nightmare Factory. We saw Jeremy Prophet in the first match. Now we've got Matt Black. And again, as I mentioned, getting ready to take on the center, Jen Melancholy. What a name. A lot of international flavor in this camp, GB, is Jin Melancholy making his way out all the way from Kuwait. Well, listen, it makes all the sense in the world. And there he goes, prove them wrong. And he's hoping to prove a lot of people wrong here, making that trip all the way from Kuwait here to the States. And it just says to me, again, that the Nightmare Factory is the leading wrestling school, not just in the country, but in the world, as people are flocking from all over the world to be a part of this camp. So I'll tell you, GB, I, we haven't even seen this guy in a match yet, but I already got to give him props because he tore two ligaments in his uh, in his right ankle a couple of weeks ago. Wow. But he wants to power through. He didn't want to miss this opportunity to compete right here tonight at Showcase 8. Sounds like the courage of his trainer, Cody Rhodes, to me. Melancholy, as we've learned over the last few months here at the Nightmare Factory, a bit of a submission specialist. And uh, it's going to be a kind of a clash of styles here because you got Matt Black, maybe be considered a bit more of a brawler here. Sure. So this is going to be a fun one here. Referee Paul Santa calls for the bell. And uh, we're underway here in our second matchup. Matt Black and the center, Jin Melancholy. I'm very interested in, look at this, they're squaring up. Ooh, collar and elbow. Yep. And uh, look, you see Matt Black clearly with the reach advantage, height advantage, and it seems the strength advantage, but trying to toy with Jin here in the corner, and uh, Melancholy's not having any of it. Here's what's interesting to me. I'm watching the confidence level of Matt Black, and then I look at somebody like Jin Melancholy who calls himself the center. This is going to be a very interesting contrast of styles, as it would seem that both of them are extremely confident. How confident do you have to be to call yourself a center? <laughs> no kidding. There was a headlock there, but now back into a hammerlock goes Melancholy, but Matt Black, great ring awareness there, goes for the bottom rope to... Make him, you, did you see that? Did you see how he just ruffled his hair? I, I saw that again. <laughs> I was talking to you about the confidence there, the confidence with which Melancholy pulls those moves, the confidence that he's squaring up. I'm telling you, this is super interesting. Whoa, and there's a big kick there from Matt Black. Yeah, he put the Dukes up, but he caught a boot right to the midsection. And now Black, firmly in control here with a big forearm right across the back. It would sort of seem as though, based on physiques, that Matt Black might have the strength advantage here. We're still waiting to see all that Melancholy can do. Ooh. What a massive chop there. You got Matt Black coming in at 212 pounds. The center, Jim Melancholy, 160. Yeah, so definitely the advantage. 50 pounds worth, but uh, certainly there's intensity there from a center. And think about it, this, the center whose last name is Melancholy, there's a lot of places we could go with that, folks. <laughs> and of course, the smaller of the two opponents, Usually smaller means quicker, and as you saw, the quickness there of Melancholy able to get out of the way. And now, look at this. Oh, whoa! Oh, and the cross arm, the Juji Katami here, the cross arm breaker. Extremely innovative way to get that move on. And very quickly, Matt Black goes for the bottom rope. His long legs able to reach that bottom rope and uh, forcing Melancholy to break the hold. We mentioned Melancholy being a submission spe specialist, and there you go. You see it firsthand right there. Absolutely. Nothing breaks your confidence like a submission move out of nowhere, but there, Matt Black turning things around there with a leg sweep, and uh, Melancholy's in a little bit of trouble right now. And I talked about the quickness. You saw just how quick he was able to apply that cross arm breaker. And now Matt Black back in charge here in this matchup. He 
sends Melancholy across into the top turnbuckle. He hit hard right on the top of his back. Absolutely did, and Matt, Matt Black there, oh, big chop, and Black is seemingly in control. It seems like he's weathered the initial storm there of uh, the center, and now we're gonna see if he can make the center pay indeed for his sins. Oh, he just hangs him right up across the top rope. Right across the midsection, you see Melancholy trying to hang on on the... And I see Black apron. smiling. Black is enjoying this right now. Oh, but wait a second, a quick reversal there by Melancholy as he, he, he just stuck the face of Matt Black into the top turnbuckle. And now a shot to the midsection, sunset flip here, but Matt Black hanging onto the ropes and a big right hand right to the forehead of Jen Melancholy. Again, the strength advantage of Matt Black, of course, spending some time training there with Jacques Rougeau and now bringing those talents here to the States to train here with all the great trainers at the Nightmare Factory. You see those stomps to the midsection there, shades of Brian Danielson. And now, Matt, uh, yeah, Matt Black, he's just firmly in control here, it appears. Yeah, Black has a lot of very interesting similarities in terms of build and in, the, in terms of the way that he can. Look at this now. This is innovative right here. It's kind of a pump handle into a, up on the shoulder now, into a power slam. That was very innovative. I've never seen anybody take somebody from the ground and take them up into a power slam position like that. Hooks the outside leg here, but not gonna be enough. Just a quick one count, actually. But I saw a mistake there by Black. Black wasted some time, you know, just being kind of arrogant and wiping his hands at the center. And I think that gave the center an opportunity to be able to recoup, but look at this. I think you're right, GB, and now, oh! Back into the, oh, another arm breaker here, trying to rip that shoulder right out of the socket and all the weight of Jim Melancholy. Oh, see, Matt Black doing the only thing he could do, which was drive Melancholy into the, the turnbuckle there to break the hold. Absolutely, and you know, I think this match is a great test there for Jim Mel Melancholy as he's going to have to figure out very often throughout his career how to overcome men that are stronger and larger than him as he is kind of lanky and small in his size, but certainly those submission opportunities are certainly helping there. And there's that quickness again as he got out of the way and then he just stuck a DDT and he just planted Matt Black center of the ring and he caught all of that DDT. He certainly did and he used that DDT to really break the momentum there of Matt Black because he certainly can't follow up on it after all the punishment that Jim Melancholy has taken. That's right, you see Melancholy slow to try to get back to his feet. Matt Black slow to get his feet as well here. And you're right, Melancholy created a little separation, created a little break in the action. But so now both men back up in a big right hand here. And now they're switching right hands right here, trading blows. There's that brawling I was talking about earlier here. It's just turning into an all-out brawl right in the center of the ring. It's exchanging four arms and right hands. But a big block there we're seeing, and now here come the kicks. And we're starting to see the diversity of... Oh, oh my gosh! What a kick right to the sternum from uh, Melancholy to Black. And now a big scoop and a slam center of the ring from Jen Melancholy to Black. You see a point of that tattoo. It's a tattoo of his father dedicating the match to his father, who certainly means all the world to him, and we understand that here. We appreciate his father watching along with us. Yeah, we talked to him backstage. He was dedicating this to his dad, who's watching along with us. Woo! And a big kick right to the back of the head. Uh, I, think, I think Matt Black might be out here. Yeah, that kick was sinful. It was absolutely sinful there. Can I he think turn him over? He's having trouble getting him over. Here's a lateral press. Yeah. Somehow, some way, but look at this. Turns it into another arm bar there. Look at this, a Fujiwara arm bar. And could, could Matt Black tap? Oh, no, oh. he reached the ropes. Smart Again. move there. Again with the ring awareness. Knowing where that bottom rope is, knowing where he's at in the ring. But again, the submission specialist just pulling that arm bar from out of nowhere. Well, and to that end, we've seen arm bars come from varying places, very many variations of those arm bars. And now I'm sitting here wondering what else is in the arsenal there of the center. Oh, gosh. What an arm drag there as, he, as uh, Matt Black just took uh, yeah, the center right into that bottom turnbuckle. You saw the nasty landing that there. That was very, very nasty, and that certainly can jar any sort of strategy there that Melancholy might have. And now this is somewhat of a torture rack backbreaker here. Oh, into a neck breaker. The torture rack position into a neck breaker. Brilliant. Again, Matt, Bla Matt Black's going to hook the outside leg here. That could be it. No, count of two and two only. Melancholy able to get that shoulder up again just in time. What a great back and forth matchup we're seeing between these two guys. Absolutely, referee Paul Santa calling the action right down the middle here. And this is a seriously back and forth match that we're seeing between these two amazing competitors here from Camp 8. 
Matt Black able to block that kick. Oh, again, right back into the Juju Katami here. Oh. But look at the look at the ring placement here. Can he can he escape? Can he? Oh, he's turning it into a pin, perhaps. No, it's almost oh, a triangle no. choke it right is. now. You're right. He's got him in a triangle choke now. What a transition! What a transition! And that's it. And it's Matt over. Black is tapping out. Wow. What a transition from the cross arm breaker into the triangle choke, and Jen Melancholy. Able to come away with the victory here tonight. What a what a transition and moves there. That was amazing. Like really, it, it, and this is what's going to make him dangerous. It is very hard to scout someone like Melancholy who can literally pull a submission out of thin air. He did it four different times in this match, and it proved to be victorious here for the debut match of the sitter, Jen Melancholy. Both of these young men, very impressive here in their. Showcase 8 matchup. And uh, yeah, again, like you said, Melancholy coming away with a big, big victory here tonight at District Atlanta, Showcase number 8.